So this is an exciting week for me. I am starting to construct something again, something that's completely going to change this empty, sad looking room. My next build is a narrow wardrobe, which might be odd for a living room, but I don't have much storage elsewhere. And I'm also going to add a hidden bed in here. It's going to integrate into the entire back wall, so it should look really seamless. I'm really happy to be making some joinery again, make something in 3D. But before I can start building, I need to prep the wall and make sure that everything around it is ready. I don't know if this is worth the effort. What am I doing? I realize I need to clean this window before I start building the framework around it. I've actually been enjoying my boring jobs this week, not because they've been particularly fun, but because I shifted my thinking around them a little bit. Usually I would be annoyed and I would want to get them out of the way, which would end up being counterproductive because it would just make me mope around more and it would take up more time. But instead, I gave myself whatever time I needed to finish them, which took the pressure off and allowed me to just move on with the tasks. Watch a movie in the background, knowing that it will be finished when it will be finished. And it worked because I felt so much happier. So apparently my room needs to be 18 degrees so I guess I am going to make a fire and make that happen. This is a no shoe room <laughs> and I'm being very strict about it by wearing these socks every time I go in. Okay let's make fire. I'm 
I think it's only about 10 or 11 degrees in here, so I'm thinking maybe I should temporarily put these windows back in so it warms up a bit faster. I'm just going to continue a bit of painting while I wait for it to warm up. I'm painting this old skirting here. You're not really going to see it. It's going to be like the inside of the wardrobe at the bottom and it'll be covered by framework, but I kind of just want it to be clean, I guess, just to make it a little bit prettier. And then we just have a clean base to work with. 13.2 degrees right now. So I'm going to do some drawings, figure out what's going to happen back here and then do the thing I'm going to do today. I've been working on an accurate site drawing for this area because everything is a little bit crooked. The walls and the floor are all leaning in every direction possible. So before I can start designing it and creating the framework, I need a good base drawing. I've been taking as many site dimensions as I can and I'm adjusting my floor plan and elevations accordingly and hopefully this means that I won't run into too many problems when I begin building the units. This room is very crooked. The floor does that, this back wall does that, and these walls on the side do that. So making this wardrobe and all the building furniture that I'm going to create and making sure that the lines lines up and works a little bit too pure but it's okay. So now I am going to put up some renovation wallpaper. Okay I've got two rolls. I have the glue. I got myself a cheap brush. I found one of these like a plastering trowel which I got a long time ago and never used. So I figured I could try this. Also, it's it's really warm in this room. It's 20.9 degrees. Okay, glue. We got some glue. And the idea is that this back wall is going to be a very narrow wardrobe and the wall itself is going to be the back of the wardrobe. I took away the first layer of wallpaper just because it was very dirty and it's it was actually just easier to take it off as opposed to clean it. I don't know, it's turned into a huge mess but I've never wallpapered before. But I'm curious what it's going to look like because I might end up using it on the other walls and I might not but yeah, hopefully it will stick. I guess that's the main, that's the biggest question. Will you stick? So let's do some stirring. Oh. This is just water. All right, I have to say I am very confused because this wallpaper is just like liquid. It's like water. I was expecting it to be really thick and also the instruction doesn't really say like how long to wait. I think you have to put it on the wall and then wait for a certain amount of time before you put the wallpaper up but it doesn't really specify how that works so yeah this is weird. This is very weird. I'm very confused. I'm so confused. Oh man. Okay, I don't feel particularly optimistic about this. Okay, this doesn't stick. Let's talk about something which I think we all really care about, which is the status of my library. You know, I find myself looking at this library now and again, and I just start to laugh because 
I put so much effort into making this amazing, all these bookshelves because I love books and I have these little nooks in a doorway for accessories and the entire thing is pretty much empty but it, it won't stay empty forever in fact, I got some books I have been searching for books and I finally got myself a cute little collection which is quite relevant to what I'm doing here so I thought I would share I picked up my last book package this week I am very excited not only did I pick up groceries, lots of them, I also got some packages. Books! It took me so long to find a range of good books. I'm very excited about reading these. I got these books to inspire me design-wise and to possibly design something in the future. The first one I want to share is this tiny book, Door Making and Window Making. This book was created after two booklets were found in an old tool chest and it shows in detail how to make doors and windows in the traditional way. It includes lots of little detailed drawings and it even tells you where to add nails. So this is a great resource. Modern doors and windows are of course very efficient but they also lack soul. So I have a dream of making something like this one day. This one is called woodwork. This is a really good source if you're interested in furniture making. It discusses hand tools, timbers, different joints, which is what I'm mostly interested in learning and it guides you through several furniture projects. I spent so much time searching for a construction book and I'm so happy that I ended up with this one, Graphic Guide to Frame Construction. This book has no pretty pictures but contains plain instructions on building a house. It includes all the detailed drawings that show you how to actually built. The only downside is that this book is from the US. Of course houses are built differently in different climates and it uses the imperial system. Measure and construction of the Japanese house is a little bit like the previous book. I was hoping for a few pretty pictures but it doesn't have any. It includes a lot of drawings on Japanese internal layouts which are very specific and there are also some sections that show how traditional Japanese homes are built to me, this book acts as a practical inspiration to aid my design decisions. This is one of the first books I picked up. Builders of the Pacific Coasts documents homes built by architects and builders during a time that building regulations weren't as strict yet. This book features a lot of organically shaped buildings, which just shows you how amazing your home could be compared to the plain boxes everybody is building nowadays. I bought 10 from the local project for inspiration. I have to admit, I thought I was paying Australian dollars, but it was US dollars. This book was very expensive. The homes featured are a little bit more on the grand luxury side, but there are still so many details you can extract and implement in a more affordable build. As a contradiction, I also bought this book, Cabin Porn, but it's been delayed by the supplier. I think it will include more affordable small DIY projects in completely different interesting locations. So I'm looking forward to another completely different approach to building. A very different book, this is on the vegetable gardening, Zeichut. It's from Belgium and I actually don't know if it's been translated into English. My sister gave this to me. It is a perfect guide on starting a garden. All the information, a really nice layer. Out. this is a really good book. Mother the Mountain is actually a YouTube channel and they published this book. This is about two sisters living on a family's land in the rainforest in Australia. They look after fruit farm with the most exotic fruits and they spend their time sewing and painting and playing with goats and ducks. <laughs> There's something very ethereal and dreamy about this book which sort of offsets all the very serious building books and inspires to really connect with nature and to just stand still now and again. For the start of a library I think this is a really nice range of books that I could have chosen for myself. So these are going to be my reference books when it comes to potentially designing and building something in the future, which would be so cool. All I need right now is time to read them and actually design, plan, implement, which I'm kind of struggling with. I work for myself, so in a way I have all the time to allocate the way that I want to but everything goes to my renovation and I really struggle with finding time for 
other things like reading and exercise. I feel like I need to learn to prioritize differently. And now I don't have any books for that, but I actually found some help online. I started to follow a class, which I wasn't quite expecting of myself. This is Ali Abdal's Productivity Masterclass, Principles and Tools to Master Your Productivity. The idea is not for me to get back into some sort of self-inflicted rat race, but I'm actually just hoping to learn new habits so I can divide my time better. I have so many things things I want to do and I don't know how to fit them all in. This class is on Skillshare, which is an online learning community for creatives and they have thousands of classes. The best thing about this class is that it's part of a learning path called Master Your Productivity with Ali Abdal. Learning paths are hand-selected classes you can take in succession and they will guide you from the basics through to more advanced levels. They have these for anything from photography, sewing, learning illustration software to starting a creative business. It's the end of winter so it's a great time to start something new. Blossom a new skill alongside the flowering of spring. Skillshare has a great offer. The first 500 people to use my link will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. Sign up using the link below and thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I think I'm going to just let this one sit here for a while and see what happens because I mean it's just kind of leaning against it. See if it's still attached. Okay. I, I emailed the company I got the glue from because I think I think it's old. I think there's something wrong with it or it's a bad batch because it obviously takes some time to bond but it just seems like I'm going to be able to tear this off really easily. I think my next step is to start making the framework for the wardrobe that's going to be on this back wall. I'm putting the wallpaper on hold for a while. They're going to send me a new box of wallpaper glue. So I've been trying to figure out how to approach the build of this wardrobe. I did a drawing. I think the best thing to do is to start making one side. I have a couple of elevations and a plan. I took very accurate side dimensions. <laughs> so all the walls and the floor are a little bit <laughs> crooked. I'm going to have two sections of wardrobe around the window. And then the window itself is going to have diagonal sort of framework around it. One of the reasons being that I don't want to lose the light that comes in from the southwest. And also because it just it's an interesting feature. So this elevation has all of the framework that I'm going to put in and some ideas for the internal layout. I'm thinking most of this wardrobe is going to be shelving and then on this side. I'm looking at adding a rail so I can take the bedding from the night and put it, hang it within the wardrobe so it can air out during the day. And then I might have some opportunity for a couple of forward facing rails. Obviously the bunkhead seating in front of it is going to have lots of drawer storage. So this room is going to have a lot of storage. I get questions about software a lot. I use AutoCAD. AutoCAD has a web version, which is quite cheap, but my internet is very slow and it's sort of so slow that it's extremely impractical. It lags too much. When I actually need to properly draw something, I will get AutoCAD's LT version. AutoCAD is a great program. Would I recommend it? Absolutely, however, only if you're interested in learning software. It's not the sort of software you can download onto your computer and sort of figure out by clicking on pictograms. If you click on the line pictogram, for example, you'll be stuck drawing lines forever and ever until the end of time because you wouldn't know how to exit the command. AutoCAD works with commands and it is quite easy to just learn the most basic commands. Another one that might be easier to use would be Vectorworks, but it's extremely expensive. So unless you're using it in a professional setting, it's not worth the cost. I use SketchUp for any basic 3D I might want to do. I know there are concerns about building a wardrobe against an exterior wall, which can cause uh, moisture issues and uh, create mold and these are things that I have considered. I am going to build it here but I'm also going to make sure that there's lots of ventilation. This wall itself is going to be the inside of the wardrobe. I'm not putting a backing to the wardrobe which can create airflow issues in between the backing and the wall and the wardrobe doors are also going to be made in a way which allows ventilation so it's going to be a very airy wardrobe 
and hopefully it will be fine. So, okay, what am I doing? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I wish I had this wallpaper up. I don't have enough clearance in the room to use the mitre saw, so I'm just going to cut it by hand. Plus, it'll be a nice, a nice way to ease myself into this project. I have no idea where the snow is suddenly coming from. I'm making yogurt cake.
bits and pieces for this framework. So I am going to put it together. I really love this stage of seeing something come alive in 3D. It makes it so real. I have to shave off part of the backside because this wall is so bent. This framework is sort of overlapping the skirting here, so I'm just, yeah. Okay, I can't get it to fit. I've like put this thing up and down numerous times. The next day and I managed to put this thing together. So bottom. So now that I have this I need to make the other side which is largely the same except I have the same issue that because of the bowing of the wall I need to get a little bit creative at the ends in the back. Um yeah so more of the same. <laughs> uh -oh.
some of this middle section but everything is quite finicky because the room is quite crooked but I've made a start this is going to give me so much good storage so because this room is quite small and this is mainly going to be a living room it is a very narrow wardrobe I'm going to have some forward facing rails but mainly it's going to be shelving and then in front of this is going to be a huge bunkette slash hidden bed and it's going to be amazing. Yeah. I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say. It's about 30 minutes later now, and I'm still standing here trying to think of what I could say. But I think I have nothing left to say. Thank you.